your favorite brush. Hey everyone, this is Lori Vafiatis in Vafiatis Studios here in beautiful Colorado and we have Milo here today. He's my buddy. Milo, here's everybody. He likes me to hold him like a baby. Hi. Hey, I wanted to tell you something about Colorado. Um, we have a saying here that goes, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes or cross the street. And uh, what you looking at? And that's true, the weather changes, it's so crazy. Yesterday it was 40 degrees cooler than it is today, if you can believe it. So um, we have learned in Colorado to dress in layers. And um, that's what our class is about today, is painting in layers. And so um, let's, um, let's get on with that. Let me put the cat down and I'll talk about the project a little bit. Bye, buddy. So we're doing a project that you can do on really small pieces and really big ones. I do it on vintage um, cards like playing cards or flash cards and I also do it on really big canvases. I do it, um, I have a piece in the airport, in the Colorado Springs airport that's like, I think it's like two by three feet and it's the same process. And so you don't have to use the same mediums and stuff I use. I use a lot of product on my hair. <laughs> and on my paintings. You don't have to use the same stuff, but if you want that rich look, you're gonna do a lot of darks and lights and darks and lights, and you're gonna do you're gonna do hard edges and soft edges. We're gonna talk about a lot of composition. And I have to tell you, I don't have a lot of rules about the mixed media and what you use, but I do use fine art guidelines, and I'll be teaching those to you because I'm also a fine artist and illustrator. But I find that when I use those guidelines, and um, you'll probably be tired of them by the time I'm done with this class. Um, it really does help make a better painting. And there's a lot of mixed media artists out there. There's some beautiful art. I love, I've learned from all of the teachers on YouTube. I just so love it. But if you want your things to, to just be on, on a higher plane, if you want to get better at what you do, then try to use some of these fine art techniques. And so let's get on with the video, I, I mean with the teaching, but I want you to know that we are going to list all of the supplies so you don't have to write that out. Don't worry about that. Just, you know, get your cup of coffee. I have my cup of coffee here. I need to warm it up before we get started. And just put your feet back and, you know, enjoy, enjoy. I'm going to love spending time with you. And just a heads up, we don't do a lot of editing, so some weird things can happen while we're, while we're doing this, while my, um, my, my director and I are filming this. And we just kind of let it go let it it's kind of like mixed media let it go go with the flow all right we'll see you on the other side bye bye all right so here we're going to do some gel plating and um people call it jellying i call people who gel plate jellicans there's a whole vocabulary a whole culture for gel plating but I'm just gonna teach you some really simple stuff this isn't a gel plating video this is for the other project but we're gonna um, explain it just a little bit anyway so here, here's my gel plate it comes in this shell package and um, I don't I don't clean my plate just to let you know it comes in between two pieces of plastic and I'm just gonna pull it out of there I might clean it every couple of months I like all this stuff on there. It's, I don't know, it's like the crust on a nice roast. Anyway, and this is just a cutting board I got from, you know, Walmart or a place like that. And I put that guy right there in the middle of that. And um, my brayer I got for 10 cents at a garage sale. I cleaned it once in the last year. I could have painted a house with the paint that came off of here. You don't have to clean it, but you can if you want to. I just put that in the top of a takeaway um, top. You stick that right in there. Usually when I'm done, I just kind of put it not face down, but face up. You're not going to see that. That's going to be off camera. So I wanted to show that to you. And so today, since we're doing really muted colors, which is really hard for me because I love brights. So I got some muted things. I got some Martha Stewart. Stuart, I like to say Stuart, and just a really the cheapest brand that Michaels carries, I think, of a soft green, and then some metallics that I've had probably a ton of years. And so these are the colors. I might throw white in there. White kind of makes it kind of chalky sometimes, and so I may not use too much of that. And then I do use um, I get the bigger stuff because I do use a lot of paint, and um, this is. Um, just a 
a turquoise and then a green. So do you see the colors we're doing? We're doing browns and greens and turquoises. I don't want to introduce a red into it or a pink um, unless I'm adding a paper to it because that'll kind of gray it. And I don't want it to be gray. I want the colors to be crisp but muted. So how we're going to start and um, is just putting down some paint. I don't put too much down. Let's see what happens. That one obviously is kind of thick. It's kind of a thick paint, but that's okay. Then I'm going to bray that. My bray is making noise. Let's see. Brayer. Okay, there we go. I know I'm going to have to break down and get a new brayer, but I like this one. It it's it, it has a, a history. I bought it for 10 cents at a garage sale in Manitou Springs, which is where um, I hang out a lot these days in Colorado. Anyway, there's that. I'm just going to, I'm not going to put any stencils down right now. I'm just going to take a vintage piece of paper. This is from an old history book, a vintage piece of paper, and I'm just going to start doing some colors. I'll do a cup, couple of these. This is from a chapter called Legumes and Peanuts. Isn't that funny? There we go. And then I'm just going to pull that up. And this is these, this is really dry paper, so I need to be careful. So I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to cover up what's underneath it, which I didn't. There's that. And this guy. So this is kind of a translucent paint. That's pretty cool. All righty. Let's try a metallic and see what happens here. Getting some of the goop off of there. Metallics uh, don't move as easily. They kind of stay put. Um, so you have to work them a little bit. And this one's very translucent. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of these on there. Let's see, just real quickly. I have bubbles in my gel plate and those showed up. I was going to take it back and complain but I figured oh that's just part of my uh, ooh, ooh I like that. Isn't that beautiful? That is so lovely. I'm liking that. So when I feel like something's kind of done like this one it's too like choppy for me so I'll redo that one but if I feel like it's getting kind of done I will put it in a different pile off to the side um, and I have stuff and I have stuff that I did six months ago and it's not quite done and I'll just pull it out when I feel like doing some gel gelling and um and start working on it until I feel like it's done. It can have 10, 15 layers on it. And even this old paper, oh, that's a cool map on the back of there. Even this old paper works really great uh, for lots of layers. And so I think I'm gonna do a songbook next. Let me grab this one. And people ask me where to get this paper and I say garage sales, estate sales, Ask your friends, hey, do you have some paper you want to get rid of? Some um, old paper or some music or old, you know, junk mail. I'm sure everybody has junk mail, right? This is a Martha Stewart high gloss paint. And it, um, it's really thick. And it's usually pretty, pretty opaque. That means not see-through. I have found the ones that I use are pretty not see-through. So let's see what happens with this one. Let's do half of this. Now I'm not using any stencils or anything right now because I'm just kind of laying, laying down the first, oh, I love that. I'm laying down the first layer on some of these. I love that so much. I'm gonna, the one I thought was done is gonna come and get a little more done. Look at these colors, aren't they beautiful? So there's a cream and a green and kind of a bronze color and they are, so, so cool. I'm loving this. So since I'm loving this, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put this whole thing in there. See what happens. Leave it for a second. Let it, let it get it. I'm going to grab my stencils back here. Isn't that nice? I didn't have to go very far to grab something. I love that. And I'm going to pick out some of my flavor it stencils and bubble wrap and stuff to do. I've got a nice pile. 
And I'm gonna throw some of those on. Let's see. Oh, goodness gracious, that is so beautiful. I actually see an angel in here. Here, here's the bottom of the skirt, and here's the wing, and I could get a pattern that I love and use this as the face, put that right up there. Anyway, I'm not gonna do anything else with that. That's, I always say that and then I come and do more. Anyway, that's lovely, I love that. So, you know, that was working for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some of Martha stuff and then some folk art stuff. Doesn't have to be this kind of paint. That's the fun of gel plating. You know, it's it's naughty and it's wonderful and it minds you sometimes and sometimes it says like a toddler, nah, I'm gonna do what I want. I kind of like entering into that kind of relationship with my mediums, my art mediums, that they don't always do what I want because you know what? I don't always have the best ideas, so. Okay, some of my favorites, let's see. This is a favorite. And so I kind of just pat it down there. And here's, oh, I love these letters. These are nice done in black. We might do that later. I'm just gonna pat that down there. And then I'm gonna go for this. Now we're just doing an eight by 10 painting, so we don't need a lot of paper, but I always, I always do more than I need because it is the way I do, oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? I'm loving that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, I don't know if I need to do anything else with that. I don't even know if that stencil came up. Oh, you know, let me try something. I'm going to do a little bit of the blue here and do the stencil a little, um, a little harder and leave, leave more of an imprint. And let's see what happens. This is just a cheap turquoise blue. Turquoise comes in greens and blues. And then let me do a little bit more of this. Push it out a little bit more. Ouch. And then I'm going to have a gel plating injury. I don't know how my wrist. Has anybody had a gel plating injury? That's when you know you need to take a break. Okay. I'm going to, oh, just a little half of this guy. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Pretty neato. I like what's going on there. I'm gonna get a fresh piece of paper. This is very white. The song, She's Always a Woman to Me. I don't like that song. It's getting gel plated. It's fun to get these old books from the 70s when I was listening to all that music and gel plate right over them. Some of them I love. That's pretty cool. I'm liking that uh, cool design in here. That's neat. That one's definitely not done. I feel like I don't want to mess with this one anymore. I don't want to mess with this one anymore. Um, see, I said before I didn't want to mess with this one, but I'm going to mess with it. So these two, I feel like they have enough action going on. I'm going to put them aside, and they'll be great for, um, for doing mixed media. I'm going to complete that with something that's contrasting. How about a metallic green? And put some of that on there. See how it doesn't want to move very much? Ooh, interesting. It picked up a pattern. It's doing something wild and wonderful. I'll go ahead and what do I want to use on there? Well, you know what? I kind of, I'm a stuck record. Sorry, it works. Ooh. How about some honeycomb? I'm gonna press that down a little bit. Ew, I'm liking that. I, I kind of just want this section to be done, just right here. So that's all I'm gonna gel plate, is just that section right there. Ooh, I'm liking that. That's fun. Not that I don't like white, but let me go ahead and do this. That's working. So for my purposes, um, I'm gonna, well, I was gonna say, I think that's finished, but I think I wanna do some white on top of that, or cream. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna grab, oh, here's kind of a, I think I got this to do skin with when I wasn't mixing my skin colors. I mix now, so. But this is kind of a peachy cream color. Let's see what happens. 
I may really hate this. I may really ruin what I'm doing. You know, there's a saying that it takes two people to paint the painting. It takes the painter and it takes the person with a hammer to get them to stop. Can you relate? So, oh heck, let's see. Let's do some bubble wrap on here. Ooh, that's kind of fun. I'm gonna have to do that on something else. I'll just do it right here. Okay, oh heck, that's fun, huh? Now I'm gonna do a little bit on this. I'm not sure I like it. I do, it's very subtle. Very subtle, nice. Mm. Oh, that turned out beautifully. I'm loving that. This one, not so much. I don't like that, so I'm gonna come over and really get that puppy wet. Oh, that's nice, that's very muted. You can still see the metallic through it. Um, when that dries, I think the metallic's gonna come up some more. And uh, I still can see she's always a woman to me. She can kill with a smile, she can wound with her eyes. Evidently this man that wrote this song got hurt by a woman. Ah, let's, let's cover it up. Get rid of she's always a woman to me. There we go, we got rid of it. Now I won't be singing it anymore. Oh, Billy Joel. Let me cover up Billy. No offense, Billy. All right, there you go. I'm loving these. So this would be more than enough to do this project with, but because, you know, because I have time and the paint is out, I'm gonna keep gelling. And so that's it for this short little um, blurb. So we came up with, let's look at our pieces again. Oh, you know what, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, do I, do I like that? But I know it's gonna be ripped up. So let me go ahead and do some ripping. Um, and um, and see how I feel about these pieces. Yeah, that's okay, I like that. That's beautiful, that's a beautiful piece. So I have to think of what it's gonna be like when it's ripped. It's not a full sheet. I'm not, I don't have to have a design on it. I'm just looking really for texture. I love this texture. I'd like to take a pen in here and kind of um, go around some of those. And that was this, um, which, let's see, that was this guy here, which I love. So these are the stencils I used just now. The one with letters, and then there's one that has paisley designs. My students argue over this, and one time I think someone stole it and brought it back to a class because I couldn't, I couldn't find it for a while, and then I found it again. But they're like, who has that really good stencil? And I have to tell you, it's so thick that I wouldn't be able to lay it down and the paint come through it because it's so thick, and someday I'll clean it. I'll probably get uh, one of my students to clean it. And I'm talking about adults and not kids, so, you know, they act like kids when they get, it's like stencils, like candy, it's like eye candy. And this one is this cute honeycomb. Isn't that beautiful? And then these are, I can't remember what those are called. That design has a name. Anyway, that's a very trendy right now. And I'm not a real trendy person, but that's kind of a sweet. It's very ge ge geometric. Most natural stuff is not geometric, but this has a lot of lines on it. This is very organic. This, even though it's letters, it's very organic. So these are things I think about when I'm, when I'm um, doing my artwork. Different kind of shapes. You like hard lines and you like uh, curvy lines. That's that's what we want. Anyway, so that's all for gel plating, and we will uh, do the next one, and we're going to be working on our other layers of paper and preparing them. See you later.